Are you overwhelmed by the sheer volume of research articles you need to read for your dissertation or project? Or maybe you're struggling to figure out which sections are actually worth your time. Don't worry, you're not alone. Whether you're looking for background context, key findings or methodological insight, this guide will help you focus on what matters most so you can work smarter and not harder. Hi, I'm Ken and I teach research at two UK universities and I run a business supporting masters and PhD students on their research. In this video, we'll cover the main sections of research articles. Specifically, we will be discussing empirical research studies. To a certain extent, the same also applies to literature reviews, scoping reviews and systematic review articles. The key sections of a research paper are title, abstract and keywords, introduction and background, methods, results and findings, discussions, and then finally conclusions. Each of these sections are valuable, but for very different reasons. Before you begin, think about what do I want to learn from this paper? Do you want to know why this topic of research is important? Or do you want to know how the author conducted the study? Or do you want to know the areas that still need further research? The good thing about research articles is that they're structured very well. And each section can often be read separately from each other, which then makes it very easy for you to skip sections and get the information that you want very quickly. This is particularly important for those who are in the middle of their research, who already have got some familiarity with the research on the topic. I will run through each of these sections and show you how they are valuable for your research or your essay. The purpose of having title, abstract and keywords is so that people can find papers easily, so make full use of that. For most articles, you get titles that are very descriptive. That means that just from the title, you typically can get quick information about the research method, topic and context. If you're at the point of looking for papers to support an argument or a statement in your essay or looking for papers about your topic, the title can quickly tell you if the paper is going to be relevant or not. Keywords which are found at the bottom of the abstracts are often neglected. However, this is particularly useful for students who are doing literature review and systematic reviews. These keywords are keywords that the authors have chosen to allow other researchers to find their paper. They may include alternate terms of keywords, methodological terms, names of theories that they use, sample type, etc. As a literature reviewer, your job is to identify the right articles, but that can only happen if you search the right keywords for the papers that you want. These keywords over here are particularly helpful for you to identify synonyms and alternate terms that you may need to search when you're looking for literature. The abstract is something structured into background, method, findings and conclusions for easy reading. You don't need to read half the paper before you find out that it is irrelevant to you. Because I need to find information quickly, I will first read the title, then skim the abstract. My eyes are looking out for certain keywords. For example, if I'm looking for research that's related to the use of simulation for first year medical students, I'm looking out for words related to my interest in the title and the abstract. I do not tend to read abstracts in full because it takes time and the only thing I'm interested in is knowing whether or not a paper is relevant to my interest or not and whether or not it's worth for me to download it. If it's relevant, I will read the paper in full anyway. I will read the abstract if I'm interested in things that are more specific like research methods, and findings. Introductions and backgrounds are important for a number of reasons. The purpose of this section is to set up the entire paper. So you'll find some very important information that you may need. For example, why is this topic of research important? Why are the researchers looking into this problem? What are the researchers looking for? And when the world is this research conducted? For example, if you're doing an essay or writing a section about the importance of your own research topic or essay topic, or thinking about the rationale of your own research, look into the background of paper papers that are published in your topic because the authors will have to write the same thing in their own articles. Take note of how they express their points, what is the thought process that they're presenting, what research they're citing, what theories are being used, what assumptions are being made. This will give you some great insight into how to develop your own background and research rationale sections. If you're reading a paper to learn more about the research itself, then you can mostly skim the section very quickly, but look out for things like research aims and objectives, and this may be found at the bottom of the first paragraph or at the bottom of the back 
background before the method section. The method sections are useful for students who are interested in how the research is conducted naturally. So if you are reading a paper to learn how other people execute or design research in your area, you can quickly just focus on this section only. This section is helpful for research students who are planning their research study. Looking at how other researchers conduct their research can help you decide a suitable sample size, inclusion exclusion criteria, data collection method, appropriate analysis methods. If you're a systematic review or scoping review student who is reading a systematic review or scoping review, this section will indicate the key things that you can potentially use in your own research. For example, search terms, databases, critical appraisal process, etc. However, the caution here is that you need to always approach research with a critical lens. Not all research is well designed. One of the problems of publishing is that we are so tight on the word count that we often cut out key explanation and justifications of the research decisions that we make, and we only have room to report what we have done. Because of this, authors do not often explain their research decisions, and sometimes these decisions may not be carefully considered. To ensure that you are not falling into this trap, you can use checklists like CASP or JBI checklists. These are checklists used to appraise research, but for students who are new to reading research papers, these checklists can help prompt you to think deeper about the papers that you are reading. Now, the results is probably the most important section for a lot of readers. Apart from the obvious importance of results, there's a lot to learn from how other researchers report their research findings. For quantitative researchers, one of the tricky bits of writing your own findings is to how you report your statistics. What types of graphs to include, what details to include in a write-up, etc. Journal articles are a great place for you to learn more about how data can be reported and when to use which graph format to present your information. Naturally, you need to note that you may not have the same research such objectives or analysis or data. For qualitative research students, the way we report research tends to be quite consistent, but the way the themes are argued is quite an academic skill. So as you read the research findings of other research papers, take note of how authors use their participant quotations and how the authors explain their themes and organize their writing. Systematic review and scoping review students, as you read more reviews, you will similarly learn more about how to present your statistics and your narrative synthesis of your papers. Again, remember that research papers have very limited word counts, so the writing tends to be quite straight to the point and sometimes bag more explanation or clearer links. Like and subscribe if you want more free resources and YouTube guides on student research from someone who teaches this topic, and do share these videos with your friends who are experiencing the same difficulties as well. I find discussions the most exciting area of an article. Like the findings and background, looking at the discussion can teach you how to explain your findings and discuss the significance of your research findings. There are three things researchers will cover in a discussion. What the research findings mean, how do they relate to the available research, and what do they mean for practice and research. Explaining the research findings is always helpful because the result sections on their own is often not enough. It often does not tell us about how it should be interpreted, especially in quantitative research. Focus on how the author writes and explain complex data in their findings, and also what do the results actually mean. Connecting research findings to wider research is what a lot of students do neglect. Much like the background, there's a lot of academic academic writing skills to learn here. Take note of how the authors develop their arguments and how they make use of their research findings. Authors will also normally connect their research to practice recommendations and research recommendations. If you're looking for research gaps, this is where you'll want to focus your attention. Especially when you're deciding what you should research, this section basically tells you what else we need to research based on the author's findings and understanding of wider literature on the topic. However, you need to be very careful when acting on these gaps. These papers are likely to be written years ago. The gaps may have already been filled by now. Typically, researchers will set up their next research in the previous research, meaning that they'll typically research their own research recommendations. So look out for follow-up research publications involving the same authors. Sometimes these further research recommendations may be found in the conclusion sections instead. Conclusions are typically rehashing a paper's key points. Sometimes authors will withhold a lot of information in the abstract. And you may find reading the conclusions more enlightening if you're going for a quick skim of the research and the research findings. If I need to get to the research findings quickly, I will read the abstract and then the conclusions. If the paper raises something interesting, I will then read the finding sections and then possibly the discussions afterwards. 
afterwards. Every section of a research paper is valuable but for different reasons. To be strategic with your time, you need to first understand what you want out of your reading so that you know which sections to dive straight into to better maximise your time. However, for papers that are very close to your research, you'll want to dedicate more time to them and reading them fully because of their proximity to your work. It is likely that you will find useful information in every section, especially if you are in the earlier stages of your research. Saying that, if you're working on your research gaps at this point, I have a handy video on how to find research gaps and what are the different kinds of research gaps. So head on over to learn more and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye!